Shabari Times standard textbooks, we find discussion on BIBDs ranging over chapters, constructional aspect, analysis aspect, optimality aspect, these are the three basic aspects that are dealt with at different levels. So herein, so far we talked about the definition of a BIBD, the combinatorial definition and its implication towards the data analysis, then why is it balanced and then its generalization to balanced block design combining BIBD with RBD, then we talked about some constructions and then if I start with a BIBD, what else can be done starting with a BIBD, that those are the issues that still come up. So in this module 13, we are going to have a test of some such issues arising out of a BIBD. And then what if certain observations are suddenly missing in a BIBD? Is the connectedness property lost? Is the balancing property lost? These are the issues that naturally come up. So let's see what is in store for us in module 13. Shagurika, let us start with our discussion on BIBD from the point where we ended. We could see that a BIBD provides minimum average variance for the estimates of all treatment difference contrasts. That came up from our understanding about the expression for the variance, about our expression for the variance as a function of the harmonic mean and the fact that harmonic mean is less than equal to arithmetic mean, etc. all kinds of arguments. And when we tried to argue, so you tried to explain that possibly this argument goes through when we are talking about average variance of the block effects contrasts. You went quite far and you could see that that average variance also can be expressed in terms of the harmonic mean of the eigenvalues of the D matrix which is coming in the context of block effects, study of block effects contrasts. And then you got stuck because for the D matrix, harmonic mean less than equal to arithmetic mean, that part is okay, but you are not sure whether all the eigenvalues of the D matrix will be equal or not. Mm -hmm. That is why you got stuck. Yes, you are very right. You are in the right track mm -hmm. and you got the point right. A lot of things has gone, thinking has gone along this line. There are excellent research articles let me just state one result in this context. Okay. If we restrict to the class of, as you said, binary, proper, equireplicate block designs mm -hmm. with parameters B, V, R, K, so that a BIBD exists, then a BIBD also serves as the best design for block effects contrast comparisons with respect to minimum average variance. Okay, so if a BIBD exists and if we confine to the class of binary proper equireplicate block designs, mm -hmm. then not only a BIBD provides minimum variance for estimation of treatment effects contrasts, mm -hmm. it also provides minimum variance for estimation of block effects contrasts. But that is less transparent, the proof is less transparent at this stage. Okay. There are research monographs. I have a monograph with Professor Kirti Shah, Shah Sina monograph, Topics in Optimal Designs, okay. Theory of Optimal Designs, mm -hmm. that was published in 1989 as a Springer-Verlag lecture note. Okay. In that you will see proof of this result. Okay. Anyway, let us continue. Let me quickly change the topic. You have studied missing plot techniques. Yes. My question is, if in a BIBD one plot is missing, one observation is missing, does it affect its treatment or block connectedness? Is it still treatment connected or block connected or both? I am sure you can see that the answer is a strong no. In a BIBD, oh, one plot is missing, does it affect the, its treatment connectedness? The answer is no. Why? Every treatment has R replications and R is definitely more than one. Mm -hmm. See, if, it is, if only one observation is missing, whatever be the treatment leveled, for that missing observation, the treatment still occurs elsewhere, mm -hmm. therefore through other appearances it will be connected to the rest. What about any two observations missing and how far can we go? 
just for taking connectedness property. I mean, could it be any three missing, mm. any R minus one missing, any R missing? Okay. We know we are referring to B, B, R, K, lambda as the design parameters. Mm. So when you say, so could it be that any R of the missions are missing and still the design is connected? Okay. So no, any R might mean all R of the one treatment that would be totally gone. So that's not possible. That is very true. What else? Other than that, maybe the answer is no again. I mean, connectedness should be retained. Yes, I guess I can see that. One appearance of a treatment means appearance in some block that takes care of all K-1 other treatments in that block towards formation of equivalence group. Okay. So now the lambda parameter may be used to connect other treatments outside this block. I believe sort of it looks like this is true. Yes, it is very true and one can complete the argument for sure. Let me change the topic again. Just one more concept we need that is the concept of a dual design or dual of a block design. Okay. This dual design is derived from an original design by interchanging the roles of treatments and blocks. Okay. If we have a BIBD with parameters B, V, R, K, lambda, mm -hmm. then its dual design corresponds to a block design with V star equal to V, V star equal to B, R star equal to K, K star equal to R. That much we can see. Okay. Now what is lambda star? Is there any analog of lambda star here? Any idea? So it should be easy. I mean we use the relation lambda star into v minus 1 is equal to r star into k minus k star lambda minus star, v star minus v star 1. Minus 1 yes sir and uh, solve for lambda star does it make sense i'm sure there is something more to it okay let me see what would be the interpretation of lambda star in this case that would mean in the original design any two blocks have lambda star treatments in common how is that possible for any BIBD? It looks like there is a catch. Yes, if the BIBD to start with is a symmetric BIBD, mm -hmm. meaning thereby that B equal to V, R equal to K, mm -hmm. its dual is also a BIBD with the same set of parameters. Okay. And hence lambda star equal to lambda with the usual interpretation. Okay. One can show that, but can you show that while N N transpose is a matrix having diagonals all R of diagonals all lambda mm -hmm. written as R minus lambda times identity plus lambda times J. Mm -hmm. The same relation also holds for N transpose N which refers to the dual design. So can you show that if N N transpose equal to R minus lambda I plus lambda J, mm -hmm. the same necessarily holds also for N prime equal to N at least when B equal to B, that is the case of a symmetric BIBD. Okay. So that goes as a question for you. You okay, can think okay. about it. Okay, Let us now get to the concept of a linked block design abbreviated as LBD. Okay. Okay, if the BIBD to start with is not a symmetric BIBD, then its dual is not a BIBD anymore. The lambda star does not carry any sense anymore. Such a design is called a linked block design. Okay. It would be interesting to figure out the data analysis for an LBD. So you have a linked block design, that means you have a design where the design itself is not a BIBD. Mm -hmm. But if you take its dual, if you interchange the roles of blocks and treatments, mm -hmm. then it becomes a BIBD. Okay. So you have a linked block design, what would be the data analysis for a linked block design? What would be the data analysis for this block design when you identify it mm -hmm. to be a linked block design? Mm -hmm. In the sense that if you interchange the role of block and treatment, it mm -hmm. is a BIBD. Mm -hmm. But this design itself is not a BIBD. Yes. So yes. what can you say about the analysis of this design? You want to try it out? Yes, sir. Okay, let me see. I think it amounts to using the second part of the ANOVA table first because computation of block sum of squares, original treatment sum of squares is simple in view of uh, BIBD structure of the original design. So for the LBD, the steps would be like for the, for the first step, we will compute block sum of squares uh, adjusted for the treatments. Then we will compute treatment sum of squares which is unadjusted for the blocks. 
next error sum of squares will, uh, will be calculated now go for transfer of error sum of squares from one table to other yes okay. yes sir. then compute block sum of squares unadjusted for the treatments and then obtain treatment sum of squares unadjusted for blocks by unadjusted for uh, blocks. sorry sir ad adjusted for blocks by subtraction and so on okay Sir, I believe computation of average variance or variance of estimates of pairwise treatment differences would still be a problem. It will still be a non-trivial exercise. Yes, that is very much so. Only Anubha part is not a threat at all. As you said, you start with the extended part yes. because if this being a linked block design, mm -hmm. the block sum of squares in this design mm -hmm is nothing but the treatment sum of squares in the in a BIVD. Okay. Therefore, block sum of squares adjusted can be immediately computed okay. and then you can refer to the second part of the ANOVA table as you indicated rightly okay. and from there thereby you can get the treatment sum of squares adjusted and you can compute the value depth ratio okay. for testing the equality of the treatment effect. Okay. Okay, but whenever you are talking about the computation of average variance, mm -hmm. there you have to go to the C matrix mm -hmm. and do everything. Okay. Only the ANOVA part is not a threat at all. I will skip the discussion on the actual construction of BIVDs. Mm -hmm. These days we have available websites for ready availability of the BIVDs mm -hmm. given the design parameters. If such a BIVD is actually available, one can have a catalog of such designs. Okay. Okay. Sir, it would be beneficial for us if you give detailed reference to one such website that you just mentioned. Yeah, I have been involved in a study of the BIVDs as listed by our friends in IASRI, Indian Agricultural Institute Research Statistics that is in, in PUSA in New Delhi okay. and in that they have a division of design of experiments and our good friends they are professors, there are two of them, one is professor B. K. Other is Professor Rajinder Prasad. Okay. So both of them they have developed and they are continuing to develop one website on the construction of BIVDs. Okay. One is B. K. Gupta, other is Rajinder Prasad, and they have this website HTTP etc. Okay. And then you, you put the design parameters B, B, okay. R, K. You just put hmm. three of them, hmm. B, B and K, hmm. immediately they will scan hmm. and they will find out if there is a design in their website oh. and if it is there they will print it out okay. and they will okay. give it to you. Okay. So that Instantly. would really be helpful yeah, for us. Yeah, it is really helpful. Hundreds of designs are available over there. Okay. Okay. And if it is not there then hmm. they will mention why not. If it is there they will mention which theorem has been used to construct that design. Okay. There are lot of applications, there are underlying hmm. theorems, okay? Hmm. Deep deep theorems they have mentioned. So it looks pretty pretty resourceful Helpful. nowadays, yes. Yes, yes. Particularly they have developed it for experiments in design agricultural context because they are referring to the agricultural division. So in agricultural experiments hmm. they use lot of BIBDs and their extensions, therefore they need to have a catalog mm -hmm. and that's what they have been providing. So, so those who have minimum amount of knowledge regarding uh, design, yes. they would also be helpful. Yeah, and they also let, um, give the analysis of the design. Okay, okay. So you get, they are getting to the site, you get the design, you give the design parameters, okay. if the design is available, they will bring it out okay. and then they will have illustrative example to show how to do the, what you said as the intra-block analysis of the design. Okay, okay. Computation of the sum of squares, getting to the unavoidable average variance, mm. etc. Everything they are giving. Okay. A good illustrative examples. So okay. it's very important for us. Yes. It's good to know that there is yes. a site available. Yes. Okay. Yes. Apart from mm. textbooks here and there, mm. but there is a website available now. Okay. I have seen this thing developing for the last 10 years. Okay. So, Shagarika, therefore, in module 13, we have basically tried to understand the question of connectedness of a design when the observation, some of the observations are missing, how far can it go, the number of missing observations. And then we also talked about what if a design is related to a BIVD but not quite a BIVD in the sense of a linked block design. The concept of a dual design came up in the process. 
the analysis of a linked block design and the simplification that it leads to the analysis and the difficulties with the variance computation for treatment difference estimates all these things we took up one by one and in the related exercises and mcqs also we try to understand the concept of connectedness and the concept of balance from various aspects i think that was enough for us i think the next one will possibly will do with something else let's see what is there in module 14 okay all together we have three questions here go on reading please so the first one is in a bibd with the parameters b v r k lambda some k minus 1 observations are missing here we need to argue that the design is still connected with respect to both treatment effects contrasts and block effect contrasts let's see so you have a bibd basically it is a block design mm -hmm. so if k minus 1 observations are missing and if you can argue out that it is a treatment connected design then it will also be block connected design because there is this if and only if relation hmm. so it is enough to talk about only the treatment connectedness yes. that is the idea the other one will be okay or it is enough to talk about the block connectedness yes. either way it one is, of them okay yes sir. the second one is starting with a bibd with b is equal to 10 v is equal to 5 r is equal to 4 k is equal to 2 and lambda is equal to 1 we need to display the LVD and carry out the intra class analysis of the LVD. You mean intra block? Intra, sorry, sir, intra block analysis of the LVD. And we need to display the ANOVA table and steps for computing all relevant sum of squares. Okay, let's try to understand the problem. You start with the BIBD. Hmm. So there are V equal to 5 treatments and k equal to 2, so if you take all pairs, mm -hmm. 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, etc., you get all the 10 blocks. Yes, yes. So, the BIBD formation is transparent. Mm -hmm. And then you change the roles of blocks and treatments, thereby you get what is called the linked block design. Yeah, yes, sir. So, whereas in the BIBD blocks are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4 up to 10, mm -hmm. in the LBD blocks are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Mm -hmm. And then you know the formation of the LBD. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is the first part. Yes. Carry out intra block analysis solution of the LBD. To do that, in the BIBD treatment sum of squares is obvious. Mm -hmm. That will be the to play the role of block sum of squares in the LBD. Mm -hmm. In the LBD, you find first the block sum of squares, mm -hmm. as you said, that is coming from the extended version. Mm -hmm. And then you know the total, you know the treatment another stage you know the error mm -hmm. and then transfer it to the front side of the table okay. to get to the treatment sum of squares adjusted mm -hmm. for the actual LVD. Yes sir. So that's what I can see. Yes sir. So displaying the ANOVA table and steps for computing all the elements so that's not pretty yes. obvious. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here is the third one. Uh, we need to show that for a BIBD uh, with these parameters to exist mm -hmm. Uh, it is necessary that V is always greater or equal to V that must hold. Mm -hmm. Is it also sufficient? This uh -huh. is the question. Uh -huh. Okay, so it says that if a BIBD has to exist, mm -hmm. then we must necessarily have B greater than or equal to V. v. That is very interesting. Yeah, this yes. inequality, incidentally, this inequality is known as Fisher's inequality, okay. R.A. Fisher. Fisher's inequality B greater than or equal to V, an algebraic proof, a statistical proof of this inequality is given in Fisher's original book. Uh, I have read, we had an opportunity to read in the 60s, I am referring to the early 60s when you were undergraduate students, okay. and in the mid 60s you were postgraduate students who okay. read through his original work, okay. in that there is a very lucid derivation mm -hmm. of the inequality B greater than or equal to V from statistical point of view, okay. using the fact that the variance is non-negative. Okay. So, they define, he defines something, mm -hmm. computes the variance, mm -hmm. and the fact that variance is greater than or equal to 0 mm -hmm. leads to this inequality B greater right. than or equal to V. Mm -hmm. But later, R.C. Bose and M.C. Chakraborty, there mm -hmm. are people who 
give the matrix derivation of this result in two lines. Simplified now. Yeah, it's okay. now nowadays we only refer to the matrix version of this result. Okay. But it's very easy. Okay. You look to the capital N matrix mm -hmm. and you work out capital N, capital N transpose, mm -hmm. which has got diagonals all R or diagonals all lambda. Okay. Therefore, the determinant of this thing mm -hmm. one can simplify and that is greater than strictly positive. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the N matrix has got rank V. Mm -hmm. N transpose is V by V. That is a positive definite matrix, therefore the rank is V. Okay. But which is the same as rank of N. Mm -hmm. But N is of order V cross V. Mm -hmm. And if it has got a rank V, mm -hmm. then V has to be greater than equal to V greater has to be greater than equal to V. Mm -hmm. That's the trivial proof now. Okay, okay. This question this is not sufficient because we can have a combination of V and V with V more than V, but far from being a V I V D. Okay, so that part is quite tricky. Uh, it is quite possible that in a binary proper equireplicate connected block design with k is more than 2, even one missing observation may result in a disconnected block design. Ah. Is it true? Is it false? Or it may sometimes true? Let's see. You are starting with a binary proper equireplicate connected, connected block. Concept. It's not a BIVD, no. no. It does not say BIV, it's just a binary proper equireplicate connected block design. Mm -hmm. Equireplicate, mm -hmm. okay. With k greater than 2. Mm -hmm. Even one missing observation may result in a disconnected block design, my god. Too much demanding, isn't mm -hmm. that? Yes, sir. Equireplicate, if k is more than 2, so bk equal to vr, that part is clear. Mm -hmm because it is proper and equireplicate, mm -hmm. bk equal to vr and we have to assume that k is less than v, mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. but k is more than 2. Mm -hmm. So if one observation is missing, that will take up at most one replication of one treatment, but the treatments they all have more than 1, mm -hmm. r is more than 1. If r is more than 1, then of course even if 1 is gone, still 1 is left. So the connectedness may not be a threat, but then you have to think carefully about this. Okay, you have to think carefully whether the design could still be disconnected or not. Okay, what is the next question? Uh, starting with a disconnected block design, okay. inclusion of one extra observation for a suitable combination of lock and treatment will result into a connected block design. Hmm. So is this statement true? or is it false mm -hmm. or it might sometimes be true. Okay. So you have a disconnected block design. Mm -hmm. These are the two disconnected segments. Mm -hmm. And you are saying that you are inclusion, you are including one, one extra, extra observation. observation somewhere. For a suitable combination of block and treatment, mm -hmm. you are including one extra observation either in this part or in this part. Okay. And then you want to see if that results in a connected block design or not. Yes. Okay. So here, here is the third one. Mm -hmm. A balanced, a Very variance excellent. balanced binary equireplicate design is necessarily proper and it is necessarily a BIBT. Is it true or it is false? Mm. Variance balanced binary equireplicate design. Let's say it is a binary design. Mm -hmm. It is an equireplicate design and it is variance balanced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means variance of tau i minus tau i prime hat mm -hmm. is a constant independent of the choice of the pair of treatments. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. If that happens then is the design necessarily proper? That means is the block size constant? Mm -hmm. And is it necessarily a BIVD? Yeah. Interesting mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. so that is a very right. interesting question and I can immediately tell you in the late 60s there was a research, there are research articles dealing with this problem and, the, and there are examples just like this now to show that this and the necessarily BIVD, this answer is false. Okay. Ah, that is a tricky, mm -hmm. tricky proof. Very answer. simple but quick thinking okay. tells you mm -hmm. that yes, there is a design which is not at all a BIVD mm -hmm. but this design has variance balance property. It is a binary and liquid replicate design, mm -hmm. but it does not, it is not a BIVD, but still it has variance balance in property. Okay. 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 And some such things are going on here. But anyway, okay. there are standard textbooks, you can always read and so whatever I took up in these 
modules mm. on BIBD that mm. is far less than what is known in the literature mm. and one should, what one should know. But I hope the students are inspired enough mm. to take up textbooks and then Absolutely. read through the books and know more about BIBD. Absolutely. Books and research articles mm. to know more about the BIBD, okay? Okay. which is very important surplus of designs mm -hmm. in the context of block designs. Mm -hmm.